Hey guys, uh, chapter 3, lesson 3. This is your lecture on sources and uses of minerals in your textbook. It's the final lesson on minerals, so let's get started. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to answer these questions correctly. Number one, how are minerals used in your daily life? Number two, why are minerals a valuable resource? And number three, where are important minerals mined not only locally but worldwide? So, minerals. We don't just dig holes in the ground and pull out little pieces of iron like the ferrite I told you guys that are around Lafayette. In order to get the steel and gold and copper and coal and all of these minerals and non-minerals that we use in, the, uh, in industrial processes, we need big chunks of it. And these chunks are what we call ores. Ores are rocks that contain a high enough concentration of a desired substance that can be mined for profit. We don't have a lot of ores in Louisiana, but out in the western United States and northern United States, Canada, Russia, southern Africa, and Australia, and China are mainly where we find lots of ores. Now, there are two main types of metallic mineral resources that we use in our world today. One is iron and the other one is aluminum. If you remember from the pie chart on lesson one, if you look at the notes, after silicon and oxygen, the two most common elements in, in the Earth's crust are iron and aluminum. Now, we don't usually find just iron and aluminum sitting on, a, on its own. We have to process it. The main uh, source of iron that we find is what we call hematite. Okay, and iron, of course, is the main element that we use with steel, where you mix carbon and steel, and it becomes stronger uh, than iron by itself. Okay, it's used in buildings and vehicles. Aluminum isn't found in aluminum, but rather what we call bauxite, and it's found around the world, including in Jamaica, in the Caribbean Sea, which is one of the main uh, industries in Jamaica. So let's look at, here's two examples, here's hematite. It looks like when we think of iron, we think of a piece of iron that hasn't rusted. It looks like because it has high concentrations of iron. And bauxite, the red, or sometimes there's white and there's gray aluminum that's in the ore. So as you can see, it's not just a solid chunk of aluminum. We have to extract it from through usually heat bearing or other chemical processes in order to get out the elements that we want. Okay, now these are what we call common metallic resources. However, there's some metals that are so valuable that the ores are mined even though they are rare. The most common that we think of is we think of is gold, also silver would be one too. Now gold is mined because of its brilliant yellow color and metallic properties that make it useful in jewelry. Okay, and we think of it most of the time in jewelry, but actually gold has a lot of applications because gold conducts electricity and doesn't corrode. It's useful in science and industry. In fact, if you go to certain electronic stores and you pay way too much money than you really should, uh, you can purchase cables that send data and video, they're actually lined with gold because it conducts electricity so well. Okay, so and there's a whole range of resources like gold that we use in high-tech things, and they're what we call rare earth metals. And from your iPhone to your TV to the computer, all those have those rare resources that we use in order to transfer in high technology. Now, Another type of resource is non-mineral resources, and the most common one that we think of is actually sand, which is composed of particles of quartz. Sand is mainly silicon, SI on the periodic table, and we use it for industrial applications, glass, quartz for electronics, you name it, uh, it's used in, that, used in that way. So those are metallic and non-metallic resources, and metallic, of course, are common ones, and then we have rare ones. But then there are some rocks that we don't quite fit into it, and they're actually what we call gemstones. Gemstones are rare and attractive minerals that can be worn as jewelry when it's cut and polished. When we think of a diamond, we think of a brilliant piece of diamond on a woman's diamond ring, but in fact, when we pull it out the ground, it looks nothing like that. It has to be cut and polished to look like that. Now, the physical properties of gemstones, what makes them useful in industry, okay? Actually, a lot of gemstones are used in industrial technology. The vast majority of diamonds never go on a woman's hand. In fact, they're used, in fact, more commonly we can find them on the blades of hand saws and power tools because the minerals diamond a corundum are so hard that they're using cutting tools and abrasives. Okay, if a diamond can't be cut, 
normally, what we'll do is we'll, we'll file it down, usually with an another, another diamond, because remember on the Mohs scale, a diamond is 10, corundum is 9. Okay, so these are the hardest elements that we know as far as we know in the physical universe. And what they're used for is they're then put on top of the blades of the saws that makes it easier for them to cut than they would with steel. Now, nowadays, industrial gemstones can actually be created synthetically for humans to use them. Okay, so we don't, we're not just limited to what we can find in the ground. Now we can create our own uh, stones that can be used for those purposes. And even, not only that, we use them to create jewelry. Okay, so that's it for your notes, and we're going to spend some time looking at Google Earth, and before we get there, here's the cardinal gemstones. Sapphire is corundum. It's uncut. There you see at the top, and let's go clockwise. There's ruby. It's been cut, so you can see all the nice angles to where it can shine. Uh, below that is an uh, emerald that is uncut. Okay, there's that bluish green, and there's amethyst, the purple. It's uncut, and of course on the top, of rounding it out is a cut diamond. And in the, by the end of this lesson, you will, should have been able to answer the following questions. How are minerals used in your daily life? Essentially everything, apart from what we really eat, is used with high amounts of in, minerals. Minerals are a valuable resource because they're used in that full range of things. We have common metallic resources like aluminum and iron. We have rare, like rare earth minerals, like I told you guys, and gold and silver. And then we have gemstones that can be used not just as jewelry, but also in industrial applications. And so where are important minerals mined locally and worldwide? Well, let's go ahead and let's look at our map. Okay, what we see here is the Marinci Copper Mine in Arizona. And most of the mining that we do, we either drill mine shafts into the ground and go down there and dig, or we have what's known as open open mining or strip mining and this copper mine is an example of it if we were to zoom up so you see all the mountains and what happens is through explosives or actual digging uh, the earth is moved the earth and rock are moved and we find the ore and then we get there and we move it out now before there let's go to Louisiana let's go to some non-metallic resources that we mine out in St. Mary Parish okay we have one salt mine right now in St. Mary Parish. We used to have another one, the Cote Blanche Salt Mine, used by North American Salt Company. Located right there. Uh, you head south from Glencoe and you go towards Sippermore Point. You'll see it, the hill from there. Belle Isle used to be a salt mine until the 1960s when there was a tragic accident. Over 60 people were killed in a mining fire. Uh, a lot of you might have family members who work at the Morton Salt Mine right on the other side of the Iberia Parish border. and Or they might even work for Cargill, which is the sole mine supplier for the Tabasco Company down on Avery Island. And there used to be a salt mine further up in Jefferson Island up until 1980 when a drilling well punched a hole uh, in, from Lake Pignure, punched a hole in the salt mine and the lake drained into the mine and the mine had to be shut down. Now, there are no real mining resources of metallic resources in the state. If we look in the eastern part of the state, we see sand and gravel, especially along the Amy River. All this white you see is sand, and if you dig below it, you'll see a lot of gravel, and that's used in industrial applications and construction. And if we go up into North Louisiana, we actually see, we see clay used for bricks in a coal mine. We'll talk about that later in the year. And the Winfield Gypsum Mine. If you remember, gypsum's a two on the Mohs hardness scale. And outside of Winfield here in Louisiana, gypsum is actually mine. We use gypsum in, uh, in the, wall, the wall board that we use in most buildings. That you, the wall board that is in brick in your school building, if you tap up against it, that's actually made of gypsum. So let's go ahead and let's look at some mines in other parts of the world. We have mines all over the place. For example, uh, we have the world's largest gold mine. This is the Super Pit down in Australia. It looks a lot like that copper mine we just saw. Okay, here's the Super Pit. Okay, the e individual rows are roads that le go down to the bottom of the mine where they're digging at. And here's a picture of the pit back in 2005. That's a huge truck right there. Okay, you see oftentimes this will be blasted out through dynamite or high explosives. If we go all the way across the world into Brazil. This is the Carajas gold, uh, gold mine, iron mine rather, in Brazil. Okay, you see these large operations uh, being dug out and we get iron ore out of there. 
Okay, see there's an example picture right there. Brazil's a major uh, producer of that. And over in Chile, Chile is a major producer of resources. Here is the Andacoyo gold mine where they also have copper and silver that's actually dug out of it also. Okay, you see all the terrain and the uh, the levels and then there's water where they use for industrial resources. Uh, getting out and here's the, the operation center. Now, in addition, coal is also mined. We're going to go to Mongolia. Mongolia is one of the final frontiers we see in mining and here's a large open goal, uh, coal mine. Okay, and like I said, we'll talk about coal later, but coal is mined out of the ground and open pits much like much like other minerals. Okay, you see that? And also there's diamonds. Diamonds most oftentimes we'll think of diamonds in South Africa. And here's the Venetia diamond mine. It's in use. This is an open pit that's dug into the ground. Uh, and there's several pits down there. But oftentimes mining will go down in South Africa where they'll mine deep into the earth. Now, South Africa was considered to be the only place in the world where we would find diamonds in any large quantities up until we started discovering diamonds in Russia. Hey, and diamonds are formed as a result of uh, high pressure and high temperatures and often seen with maybe volcanic activity. And so the Udachaya, uh diamond mine, see here you go, you see there's the top of the mine and there's the big trucks going on. This is in the middle of nowhere in Russia. Okay. And there's there's actually a large steam shovel or drag line digging, and there was one of those big trucks. So that's, you can imagine how far away it is. Okay, and if we were to zoom out, you can see, and a lot of this, a lot of this red color is actually spoiling from open pit mines. The downside for mining in open pits is that you have a lot of minerals that you just don't use and a lot of them contain toxic minerals that ruin the land around it. So Russia, especially during the Soviet Union, didn't have the exact same environmental concern uh, that we do in the West and as a result there's large areas of Russia and Siberia. As you can see that's where the mine looks in relation to Russia. We have large areas of Russia that are essentially uninhabitable and unusable because of this. Okay, And it's not the only place up in the north where you can find diamonds. Actually in Canada, here's the Diavik diamond mine. If you've ever watched the TV show Ice Road Truckers, this is where these guys go. And this is the ice that whenever it freezes, here's where they go. This uh, diamond mine was discovered to have diamonds in 1992. The mine opened up in 2001. And so it's been in service since then. It's the northernmost diamond mine in the world. Okay, here's the maintenance building. You can see where it looks. See, it's really, really cold there. And so it makes it very inhospitable, but the price and value of mines makes it worth it. Now, we can find diamonds in places that aren't quite as uh, drastic. In fact, it's not too far from here. It's about a day's drive. Here's the crater of Diamond State Park in Arkansas. Uh, about a hundred million years ago there was a volcano right here and the volcano collapsed and over tens and hundreds of millions of years uh, the volcanic action went away and what we found is we found diamonds and you can go and you can dig around in the dirt and whatever you find is actually yours it costs about seven dollars a person to get in and if you go and you uh, you can rent resources for about a hundred bucks including deposits and whatever diamonds you find are yours and they've found several large diamonds in the area okay so here see people you can go out there and you can work all day and if you find a diamond it's yours and then they have a water park and things like that so mineral resources can be found all over the place even where we wouldn't think so which would be here locally around us in St. Mary Parish Okay, so here's our lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you didn't catch something from the lesson, feel free to go ahead and rewind and go back to it and go look over. And remember, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for listening.